All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Rick Cartwright. He's doing the presentation this month. And so, Rick, it's all yours, and I'm going to mute myself. All right. Can everybody see that? I trust everybody can because you're all muted, so you can't tell me if you can see it. If you can't see it, we're getting send, a, send a chat. Got it. Good. So we're good. So I want to do something a little different today. I had this request actually from somebody that wanted to talk about extensions. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about app extensions and how they work and try to at least hit a little bit on iOS, iPad OS and Mac OS. We're not going to dive real deep on Mac OS because I find extensions aren't as functional there. Don't, don't help me as much there as they do on iOS and iPad OS. But I will talk about all three a little bit, show you some uh, some of what all three can do, and then we'll do a live demo on iPad OS, where you can actually see it work. So I'll try to go slow enough that it makes some sense, answer any questions, and uh, if you're already an expert, that's great. I apologize for any uh, redundancy there, but we'll get that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oops. So what is an extension? Why should you care? Uh, app extensions, uh, well, let me just show you this next slide. Here's what an app extension is. And this, this is a paragraph that's full of interesting things. An app extension lets you customize functionality beyond what apps typically do. And they make it available to users while you're interacting with other apps in the system. So for example, if you're in Safari, you can use an extension to turn a web page into a PDF and send it to somebody. Or if you're, in, if you're looking at a photograph, you can use an extension to send that photograph to a tool that edits the photograph and then lets you save that photograph or send it to somebody or something like that. Uh, there's, there's extensions to do all kinds of very interesting things, but developers have to enable extensions and we'll, we'll talk about some of the ones that are there and some of the ones that aren't there maybe. Uh, they gave an example of using a widget on the home screen, add buttons to, to create, to use the action share sheet to offer photo filters and blah, blah, blah. You can do all that. We'll, we'll look at a couple of those so you can see those. I find extensions very powerful and I use them all the time. And I hope after this meeting that it makes some sense and you can see how you might be able to use them as well. So I'll do my best to help you with that. All right. So there are three pages here of all the different types of extensions. We are not going to walk through all this. I just want to point a couple things out on each page and tell you some of the more common extensions that you might encounter and where you will see them. The first one on the list, for example, is action extensions. These are custom extensions that give you access to the share sheet, which I'll show you what that is in a few minutes, where you can invoke this functionality with the app. And you will see those on iPad OS as well as Mac OS, but those are very powerful. Those are probably my number one use of, of these things is in actions. And uh, we'll look at examples. Uh, authentication services. I use authentication services to log into apps. And you've probably done this too on your devices because it works on both Mac OS as well as mobile. And you can use these authentication tools, not just with Apple's uh, keychain, but you can use them with third party tools like 1Password to authenticate you to use a service. And uh, you know, you used to, you had to go out, open the app, get your, get your password, then come back and paste it in. Well, now it can all happen seamlessly to where you just get it to pop up on the screen and you use the share sheet or you use the action sheet to, to get these extensions to pull that in and plug it right in and works. And most of us don't even realize we're using one of these, one of these tools, or one of these extensions when we're doing it, but it just happens automatically. It's really great. Another one I'll mention on this page is content blockers. I use a content blocker. Content blockers block advertisements. And uh, there's, there's extensions to help with content blockers. I'm not going to talk about content blockers today, but it's a big one. File providers. There are, there's an extension to open files. And, you know, if it's on the Mac, of course, you're going to open them. It's easier to understand on the Mac, but on iOS, 
you can actually open files so that you can save, open, store, save, modify all kinds of things to files. So that's really powerful. Um, so we talked about some of the more common ones there. Oops, I got my I got my thing upside down here or something. The next group I wanted to talk about, and we're not going to spend much time on this because it just gets long, is there's iMessage extensions, and this works on both both the Mac as well as on mobile. Um, when you send, you, you've got something on the display you want to send to somebody as a message. Let's say, for example, I'm on a web page and I want to share this with Bill. I want to tell Bill about this web page. I can just click a button and send it right to Bill with just a couple clicks without having to copy it, go over to messages and paste it. It's just a lot simpler using the app extension to do that. And uh, that gives you this really powerful tool for sending those, and I can do that on the watch as well as I can for some types of things. I can do that on the watch as well as on the Mac and and uh, iOS, iPad OS. It's, it's better. It doesn't really work as the same on Mac OS, but we'll sh I'll show you it today on the on the on the iPad. Photo editing. I mentioned this one a few minutes ago. There's really powerful extensions to allow you to edit photos without actually opening the app. You just use parts of the photo editing tools to edit the photo and uh, it's, it's pretty cool and, and very nice. Sharing, we talked about sharing a little bit already. Um, and the last one I'll mention is widgets. We're not gonna talk about widgets today. I don't wanna confuse the thing today too much with widgets, but there's really powerful extensions that you can use with widgets that we'll do in a separate class and we'll talk about widgets. So how do you put them to work? How do you actually start that? I'm gonna talk about the share sheet and I'm gonna show you this, this share sheet on both Mac and on mobile. So here's a web page. I go to that web page. This is on uh, iOS. You notice that when you go to a, when you're in Safari, there's a up arrow right up there on the top line. You can see it. I don't think I can point at it, but you can see it up at the top where that little arrow is that opens the share sheet. And this is what the share sheet looks like for me. Yours is going to look a little bit different. And that's where you open the share sheet to actually make this happen. And this is what it looks like on the Mac. If you click, if you click the three little bar, the three little scroll bars up there at the top, you can open the share sheet. It's in the today view. And you can actually see the same thing. There's, there's the up arrow thing there. And there's all the different ways I can share. The, the same web page. So this is the same web page on the Mac. Now, I blew it up so you can actually see it. So some of the things I could do once I got that web page there, I could send this in a message. I could airdrop it to somebody. I could put it into a note. I can add it to a reminder. I can put it in an Evernote. It just depends on what apps you have on your system, how you can use the share sheet. These are all the apps that I have. It's not all of them, but it's most of them that have, sh have the ability to share these extensions. And um, I tend to use messages more than anything else because I talk to a lot of people, but I can share it on Twitter. I, I send a lot of stuff on Twitter. I can add it to Draft, that's an app. Um, I can add it to Good Links. Good Links is one of my favorite tools for storing links. Uh, and I can add it to share it to, to iBooks, to books if I wanted to as well. Inside the share sheet on iOS, there's three different types of categories, I'll call them, of, of share items. The first one that they call the quick share, this is what Apple calls it, the quick share panel. This is usually people. So these are, for example, my wife is there. Now notice beside my wife's picture, you see the little radio, the little radio symbol? That indicates that I am going, if I click that, it will airdrop that web page to Teresa. So she'll get it immediately. It'll come up on her screen and ask her if she wants to accept it. She'll say yes. And then it'll open Safari and open that web page right on her phone. Now these other people, John, my, my uh, son and daughter-in-law, my other son, Ben, and I can scroll across there and I'll do that when we're live. There's a whole bunch of different people and groups in there. That's just different people and groups that I could share that with so that they could actually receive the, this thing and I could add comments to it. And I'll show you that live too, so you can see how that works. But that's the share panel. The next panel down is called the app panel. 
instead of people, this is apps that I can share my function, my, uh, my whatever information I have with. So if I click airdrop, it would open the airdrop tool and it would show me who's, who's close by that I share with on airdrop. These would be people that have been able to share with people in their address book or people that have just left their system wide open. And I would see uh, who, who's available that I could share it with. Messages would be other people that beyond what's listed in my quick share panel. Mail, I could send it as a mail, email, um, email to somebody. Evernote's an app and then there's other apps. I'll show you that in a few minutes. And the next group down gets into, there's, there's a couple, three categories. Favorite apps. So these are favorite tools that I use all the time, like save video, copy the, copy the link or copy the video. It's context sensitive. So when I click copy, if I'm on a web page, it copies the link. If I'm looking at a picture and I click copy, it copies the picture. It knows what you're looking at and, and tries to make an inference as to what is it that you would want to share. And so it makes that smartly. Get info is if I'm looking at a picture, I click get info, it would show me details on that. Or if it's a web page, it would give me information on that, that type of thing. Most of these are Safari initially. And then on down is more app extension. And I'll show you what some of those look like and how you can edit those. All right, I'm gonna show you a demo and this will take a little bit of time, but I wanna walk through a few examples of how this works. So we're going to jump out of here. I haven't done this before, so we'll see how this works. This is going to be interesting. All right, here's a, here's a web page. This is apple.com. Let's suppose I want to uh, share this web page with my wife. I click the up arrow up there in the top corner. Now there's my share sheet again. You notice I can airdrop to Teresa again. I can scroll across. See me scrolling across there. There's Teresa's text message. The Kathy, there's Kathy. I'll send it to Kathy. I can, and it's going to show you the people that you have recently shared with. So it's not going to just randomly pick anybody out of your address book. This looks at who you typically share information with. So it has my family in it for the most part. It has people that I have recently texted with for whatever reason or shared text with. And then I can add some comment like here is the link to the Apple web page. So it allows me to add some comments. Then I click the up arrow. Now she's going to get that message and it just takes me back to the page. So that's how you share to the action to the to that yeah, sheet of it. people. You got it? Good. And you should have got the message too. Now the thing about this is, as you scroll across, you may find, and it's not uncommon for me, there are people that I text with that I just don't text a lot. I don't text every day. The people on that list can change just depending on the day. It, it, Apple has really been aggressive about trying to figure out based on the time of day or your location, who it is that you might want to text. So who's in that list there may change. Uh, I have a group of people, that, these three guys that we, we talk about Apple stuff all the time. That's my Apple talk group. And, the lo and you can create groups and messages. And we have this group and that's our logo for the group. It's just an Apple. It's kind of corny, but it works. Now, let's suppose that I wanted to send it as an email. I could click the, I want to send this page as an email. I could click the mail and then it opens an email. I get the question about who I want to send it to. And I'm going to send this one to Bill. I have him in there in multiple ways, but we'll send it to the president. Click on that. Now I got the titles already in there. I could add some text to it, whatever I want. Then I just click the send button and off it goes. Now that is a lot simpler. I hope you can see that. It's a lot simpler than copying the thing down. You remember when you used to have to copy the address then you'd go over to your email, you'd start a new email, you'd type in the, all that other information, then you would paste the content in your, in your body, your message, and that's how it would work. This saves all that because you can just do it right from the share sheet. Okay, that's the first two groups. Any questions on that so far? Because I want to get down to the next group of things, but I'll try to answer any questions. Is there any questions? Is it making sense? 
All right. Uh, now Rick, the next group of, right. yes. Uh, on the airdrop, does the person have to be uh, within the Wi-Fi range or can they be anywhere on the net? They have to be within range. It's Bluetooth. It's a combination of Bluetooth Wi-Fi, but it, I think it mostly uses Bluetooth. I don't remember for sure. I could be wrong on that, but some, right. I'm pretty sure it's Bluetooth. But if I click AirDrop, for example, I'll click Bluetooth. The only one close to me is my wife. If I and when I'm with at a family gathering, it'll be full of people because everybody in the everybody in my family's got an iPhone. I spoiled them all. I messed them all up. But they've all got iPhones, so they all show up. Now, if somebody has their airdrop turned off or they have it to select contacts only you may not see everybody that's in your area that has one but if they if they if i'm in their contact list and they've enabled contacts or they're just wide open i would see them in that list here i just see my wife make sense yeah um when i was teaching some kids would say um you might not want to be have airdrop open because we can send you all kinds of stuff Oh yeah, that is very true. I've seen that on an airplane. If, if you wanna do something fun, whenever you can travel again, get on an airplane, look in your airdrop thing and see how many people are on there that you have no idea who they are. It is amazing. I've always wanted to send them something funny, but I, I knew they'd know who I was, they'd figure it out and I just never had the guts to do it. But maybe as we're getting off the plane someday, I'll do it. But I, I, I recommend doing contacts only and a lot of people would keep it turned off until they know they want to receive something. I keep mine on, but I have it set to contacts only. I've never had a problem because most of the people I airdrop with, I trust and I know. But you know, you, you got to think about that. I did want to show you one more thing on this screen. Notice at the top it says Apple M1 chip. That's the title of this particular web page. If you click that options button, you get a question as to how do you want to send it? And this is really great. You can say automatic and it'll just try to figure out what the best way to send it in a suitable format. In this case, it sends the link, but you can select send it as a PDF or send it as a web archive. I have many, many times needed to send web pages or other things in other formats other than what it automatically wants to send them. So I send them as a PDF. Uh, you could select web, web archive and it would send it that way. And I've never used that, but you can. I usually leave it on automatic, but you may have a reason to, to use what else is in that box. So it's always good to look. And you just do that by clicking options right up there at the top of the screen. All right. Now the next group of things is a little more complicated and it can be a little bit crazy they try to set this up automatically and until you tweak it the way you want it, 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 you never know, if, you know, what you may get some stuff in here you don't ever use. And you'll see that when I show you this in a minute. Now that first group is stuff with, is all stuff to do with Safari. I can, these are, some of these are shortcuts. I'm not going to talk about shortcuts today, but I write a lot of shortcuts and these are little programs that will run on iOS. They're kind of like Apple script. And you can do the same kind of thing with Apple Script, I, I would say on your Mac, but I create these things sometimes and I put them in here and I'll show you one of them just for fun. But they're little programs and they're easy to do, but they're kind of fun. But here I can, I can say that make it into a PDF. So if I click make a PDF, that actually runs an Apple Script that tries to turn this web page into a PDF and then I can just see it myself or save it or whatever I wanna do with it. I'm not gonna show you that one. Tweet details. I can tweet information to Twitter right from that link. Download YouTube. I can download, now this doesn't work very well. It's supposed to, but I've never been able to get this to work right. It's supposed to download the YouTube video, but YouTube seems to not want me to download their videos and I understand why not. Download MP3, you can download MP3 file. This is another uh, simple one. Extract image, extract image links. Sometimes this is another, this is one you probably won't have, but this a specialized one I have. The specialized one I will show you is I write a lot of my stuff in Markdown. I don't know if anybody here has ever heard of Markdown or cares what Markdown is. Markdown is kind of like HTML, but it's a way to write stuff in a format that is just strictly text so that you can look this up. You don't have to worry about it being in Word format or in pages format. It gets rid of all that formatting and it's just a way to generate text files 
but inside the text files, you have these markdown, uh, these markdown rules that you use so that when it's rendered, it looks like it's on the web. So you can render uh, fonts into bold or underlying, other things like that. Well, when I write, when I write my blog, I use markdown. Well, this, this little shortcut generates the right format for links that I paste into my blog. So if I click that, this is a shortcut that'll run. It'll come to enter the text to display for this URL. So I would say, this is the web page for M1. That's stupid, but that's what it is. And then I click done. Now it has saved that format in a, um, it saved that format. I'm gonna go into my wife's thing again. There's what it looks like right there. So you get the idea. So those are those are very specialized tools that you may never use, but if you find something that you want to use, you can stick it in here and use it. And I'll show you how to put them in in a few minutes. Okay, here's some more web stuff for for Safari. I can add a bookmark. So if I'm on a web page, I want to add a bookmark. I can just click that up arrow, click add bookmark, and puts the bookmark in my list of bookmarks. If I want to find something on the page. There's multiple ways to do this. I know there is, but this is one way to use the find on a page. Click that and it finds something you want on that page. If I want to add this page to the home screen, I can click that little square with a plus around it and add this web page as a, uh, as a home, as a link right on the web on a home screen. I'm going to mark up actually starts the markup tool. So if I have a photo or even a web page, if I click markup, now I can go in here and I click the dot here and I can write on this web page. I'm just making some lines here. And I can I can go in and embed it on it. It's not doing it right at the minute. I'm doing something wrong, but you get the idea. The tool lets you mark up a web page and then it'll save it. So you can have the markups on your web page and it's not letting me do it. It's supposed to be writing, but I've not clicked the button for some reason. You get the idea though. Huh, it's supposed to do it right there. Anyway, it's, it's a PDF now. So it's already saved it as a PDF and it's supposed to be letting me write on it, but it's not doing it and I don't know why. Probably because I'm doing it with my, should be using my pencil to do it, but I don't have my pencil with me. You get the idea. It does work because I use it a lot. I delete the PDF. So these are all more tools. I can go into the one password to actually open one password and pull out a password if I want to put it, if I need to use a password. And these are all just more, more uh, things that I have in my list. Now, let's suppose for a moment that you want to um, edit this list. You don't like it or it's got stuff on it you don't have or it's missing stuff you like that if you click edit actions down at the bottom down there that list then you get a list this shows you what's in your favorites you can delete stuff by clicking on the little red button there and it'll delete stuff out of your list uh or these are other actions you can turn them on and off these are actions that are that are supplied by app developers so they have made theirs available or it's available like Lear is a rs reader if I click and turn that on, now Lear will show up in my list and it would be an action item, whatever action item they have. And I could do that. And you can click the plus button, it would move it up to your favorites. So every app I have is in that list. These are other, a lot of these in this list right here after I get past the on offense are actual uh, shortcuts that I have that I've made available from the shortcut app. And I'm not gonna get into shortcuts today. Any questions? Because you'll want to one. do that. If, go ahead. Kathy's got a question. She's muted. Um, Kathy, I'm muted. you overdo those app extensions, get too many of them, does that take up too much space on your device? It doesn't take up space on your device so, so much as it just gets hard to find what you're looking for. I'm at a borderline in that case right now. I need to... I need to 
purge a few of mine and clean them up a little bit because they're not organized well enough right at the minute. I've been adding stuff over time. I come across that I like it. I use it and then I've not used them for a while. I need to clean that up. It just, you gotta, if you let the thing, it could get carried away. You get a really long list like I've got and it gets hard to find what you're looking for. And so that's the only thing I think. It's not as much a memory issue as it is a hard to find issue. You just keep changing you know your favorites all the time then, you know, just go through it and change some of your other that were favorites, not favorites anymore or something or, and still keep them. I just wanted to, I'll just finish up here. I mean, the bottom line is app extensions allow you to easily execute functions from an app that may not be the app you're currently in. And I find them as a really powerful way, especially on iOS and iPad OS, to add functionality that normally you wouldn't see or do. So I'll answer questions and try to do that while I'm trying to get this thing back up, but that's, that's what it does. Where... Go ahead, Oh, I, I was just wondering, where, you, where do you find them? They, when you download an app, they automatically are in your system so then when you go into the, um, when you go into that share sheet and you click edit, there'll be things will populate automatically. And then you just select which ones you want and, and turn them on. So they automatically populate. If you, if you download, if you download Instagram, for example, Teresa, when you download Instagram, Instagram's thing populates automatically. So it would, it would be there. The same with a lot of other apps. So it happens automatically. Safaris are all automatically there. You just got to turn them on if you want to use them. I see. They happen automatically. Which is why they don't take up extra space really on your device because it's already code in the application and in the operating system. So there's a program I use to keep myself uh, uh, organized. It's a productivity app called Things. If I get an email from somebody, I can tap and say, share, share it to things. It puts it into my productivity app for me to later file where it needs to be. If someone sends me an attachment to on an email, I can again send that to a particular project that I'm managing inside things. There's other programs like Evernote that have these sorts of things built into them also. So there's it just, there's so much out there and you, you really get to the point where you have to pare it down to the, the ones that actually are improving your life as opposed to being a digital toy that you played with. That is a really good point, point Bill. Bill. Uh, I got my microphone over okay. here. So with that said, are you back now, Rick? I'm, I'm back. back. Okay. So, so um, about uh, if you but, take a, uh, when I, if I want to make a PDF to send to someone, what I normally do is <clears throat> pretend I'm going to print it. And then there's a, is that an app down at the bottom of the page on, for my printers that uh, save as a PDF? Is that, would that be considered just an app or is that just something that's built into the printer? It's well, built into the operating system. Yes. It's built in the operating system. PDF. Okay. Uh, and depending on which version of the operating system, you can have it where it prints to PDF, but it actually will email it to them. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So all of a sudden I've got a share screen in front of me. Editing actions, Mac OS. This is this is I just when you want to edit them, this is the way you edit them on the Mac. Okay. So this gets back to that question about how do, how do they show up? They're populated automatically. And if you, go on, if you go on your share sheet on the Mac and you go down and click more, then you'll get a list that goes over to the share menu and, and preferences. And you can pick which ones you want in your share sheet. And that's how you do it on the Mac. Gotcha. And it's, it's not that much different on iOS. I got a picture of it here. Um, here it is on iOS. And I walked through that a few minutes ago. And that's how that's how that works. It is it is a tool, and you just have to practice with it, play with it, learn to use it, 
but it, it, you know, you don't want to just put everything in the world up there because it just will get really confusing. I have more on there than I use, but that's because I have problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll answer the other questions. I do, I do want to mention that at a future meeting, I want to talk about widgets. These are widgets. So widgets are really powerful. They're kind of like app extensions because they're, they're little pieces of applications that you can put right on your screen. Like for example, that top one on the left side, on your left, on my left too, that's the activity widget. And it looks at the current state of my activity at that particular moment. Next one down is, is the battery status of all my batteries. And there's the weather, current weather. And then on down is, is links inside of this thing. Those are not just programs, but they're smart little widgets that actually show you what a program can share with you. And they're really, really powerful. The one on the far right is some more widgets uh, in the, inside the app libraries. And I wanna talk about app libraries sometime too, because this is a new tool that I doubt any of you are using, but it's really powerful to clean up your iPhone and to allow you to execute in a, in a really cool way, because it's kind of how how you can add functionality to your iPhone or to your iPad. Okay. It doesn't Rick, do as Kathy much on- Kathy has a question. Yeah, Kathy. We're, um, from what you're saying that all like our, our iPhones already have all these things already on it. I noticed I've got some. Now, do they do, are they constantly working? Does that affect the drain of your battery? No, oh, they don't work until you tell them to. Now, the, that's, that's a little different with widgets. Some of the widgets actually have a, uh, some of the widgets will function to grab, like the one, the one I showed you there with my activity, it goes out and gets updated every so often. So it uses a little bit of processor power every, I don't know, every few minutes. I don't remember what the time frequency is. It depends on how the app developer programmed it. But for the most part, you never noticed it because you just you couldn't put enough of them on there to actually do it. it. It would be it would be so confusing, you'd never be able to keep up with it. But it works really well for that functionality. Okay, thank you. That that helped? Yes. Other questions, because that's all I have for the day. We're 20 minutes early, but we'll answer questions till everybody's done. Does anyone else have another question for Rick about extensions? Going once, going twice. I'm not seeing anything on chat. I'm not seeing anything on the screens. Okay, so um, we, we've got the December meeting and then we're into 2021. Hopefully 2021 is a better year than 2020. But what kind of theme do you want us to have for 2021? Um, 2020 was supposed to be a more technical orientation. I'm wondering if maybe we should go back to doing simple stuff in 2021 for presentations and such. More of a, you know, this is the stuff you need to know, the basics, if you will. Thoughts? Comments? How, how basic are you talking? Well, it seems to me that every two years, the operating systems on mobile and desktop have changed enough that we don't know how to do the basic stuff anymore because they changed it, they moved it. And, and, just, and just one last item, and that was Rick wasn't sure who had asked about extensions originally that uh, generated the movement for this presentation. And it was Lenore, Rick Wavy, Lenore. <laughs> You're the one who, Lenore Gessner, who had asked about extensions. Okay, thank uh, you, Rick. Okay. You're welcome. That said, Glad to help. Say, thank you all for coming Aloha. in. Aloha. Yeah. Aloha. Bye. Bye. The meeting is officially over. If you, if you need to talk to me, I'm going to stay on for just a little bit. <laughs>